Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about cloud computing economics. So we're going to talk a little bit about the financial aspects, the monetary aspects of cloud computing, why people consider cloud computing, why some companies uh, leverage cloud computing more than others, and what are more of the aspects that make up overall cloud computing beyond just uh, initial costs, uh, acquisition costs, whether those are on demand or, or for actual capital purposes. Okay? So let's talk about sort of the aspects of IT that involve cost, uh, because that's going to make up the bigger economic picture, and how cloud computing either improves those costs or potentially changes those costs in, in new ways that, either, that could open up opportunities for a business, whether they're a new business or they're an existing business, and, and how these might impact your decisions as to whether to leverage public cloud resources, to deliver and build private cloud resources, or some combination in between. So let's talk about kind of the basic building blocks of where we spend money to either consume IT services or to, uh, to build and deliver IT services, okay? So the basic building blocks are going to be, I'm gonna have infrastructure, okay? So my servers, my storage, my network, um, the things that interconnect my networks, so my wide area networks, my local area networks, my wide area networks, my storage networks, my servers, my, um, it's going to be software, you know, software licensing. So I've got infrastructure, whether this is hardware infrastructure, software infrastructure, or sort of telecommunications. And I probably should break out telecommunications as a separate line item because telecom costs um, are going to be those costs that are either going to be telephone bills, wide area network bills, local area network cabling, all those sort of things. And then I've got IT skills. And IT skills are going to be the cost of the people that you train, that you hire, that you um, help maintain to run all of your infrastructure and to run your applications and so forth. So huge piece of that cost. Um, you know, the numbers vary. And then we've also got the resources for things like, uh, you know, our data centers and the operational cost uh, for power, cooling, uh, electricity, all those sort of things that go within the data center facilities, okay? Now, I'm not gonna break these down into, you know, exactly how much each one costs because different industries have different variations, but, you know, in general, those are the big, big things that are making up where, uh, you know, software licensing fits into here, uh, you know, people skills fit into here, depreciation, um, and all the things that involve like taxes and did you make a profit and um, all those sort of things are going to fit into different places. Now, when we think about what do the economics for this look like? Well, for the longest time, uh, you really had two options. You had the option of, you know, this was a purely a, what we call capex or capital expenditures, which means I have to come up with the money, whether it's uh, directly with the money or through a loan, to buy all of these things and buy them on a one-time basis, buy maintenance and support for them, or you know things like telecom on a monthly or an annual recurring basis. Okay, or so capex was one option. So basically, you owned those assets; they were on your books. Uh, you could do with it what you wanted to, or you could outsource. And by outsourcing, you could outsource lots of different elements of this. You could outsource the people that that maintain things. You could outsource the hardware and then the software. You could, uh, you know, you could have people come into your facilities and manage these things. You could put your equipment in somebody else's facilities, like a co-location facility or a service provider's facility. So there were lots of different variations on this, but the ultimate goal of outsourcing being that you really want to make everything an operational expense, right? You would like somebody else to take the burden of owning the capital and the assets and the depreciation, and you simply want a weekly, monthly, yearly, buy the drink, however it gets measured, cost coming back to your business with the goal being, well, I can then better match my business demand, my business profits, my business revenues, whatever those might be, to my IT costs. And I could try to align those in some way. So in the past, these were sort of the two options to deal with all of these costs that made up what went on in the data center, right? And, and by IT skills, I include things like, you know, all the management and monitoring, um, 
you know, so all those things. So I'm, I'm, I'm limiting the buckets just for space reasons and for simplicity, but that's what you had. You had a whole bunch of costs, and you had the option of either buying those up front, you had the option of buying them, uh, essentially paying for them on demand, or having some mix of those things, right? So where cloud computing comes into play is cloud computing doesn't necessarily change what make up the cost of delivering applications and delivering services, but what it does is it starts to let people look at it, things a little bit differently, okay? And the need to look at things differently or the reasons for making these things look different is a couple of things. One, um, if I'm an existing business, I may want to look at ways that I can move to more of a, of a OPEX type of model or potentially I can ask my IT organization to act like a service provider and provide a per line of business basis OPEX to individual pieces of my business. Right? Um, I may want to look at how do I shift my cost uh, percentages from what's CapEx to what's OPEX. You know, those are some of the things that a, a traditional business may try and do and where cloud computing can play a role in this. The other thing is you're seeing more and more businesses, whether they're a startup business or they're a division of a larger company, but they're thought of as a startup business. So they're an R&D group, they are an innovation center, they're a spin out or something, where they're not given a lot of resources to get started with. They're really asked to, to be treated like a startup themselves, right? Small amount of capital gets started and uh, keep your costs low, innovate like crazy, maybe you'll make some mistakes. And so th those are the types of, of businesses that initially started looking at cloud computing and said, I don't have this. So what other options are available to me that aren't necessarily long-term outsourcing contracts, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, because I don't know that we'll still be around in those time frames, right? So what we started to get is this much different spectrum. And I tend to draw it like this, where you know CapEx was on one end and OpEx was on the other end. And for the longest time, you know, if you owned it, if you owned things, you were a little more heavy on this side. If you, you know, outsourced, you were, you know, heavier on the other side, but you tended to get the same types of technology. Cloud computing comes in here and really disrupts this model to where OpEx is where our costs are, right? Private cloud or public cloud. Um, but I've really disrupted what that, that fulcrum looked like, what that paradigm looked like. And in some cases, really, really for good reasons, right? So if I was a startup, I was able to leverage public cloud services. I didn't have to buy servers. I didn't have to buy infrastructure. I could basically rent software licenses as opposed to having long-term contracts for them. I could make mistakes. I could start over with technology. And I'm doing it all on a, on a purely cost basis, on an on-demand basis. And for some businesses, this was fantastic. For other businesses, they said, look, uh, we still look at technology as being core to our business. And we feel like owning those assets makes sense for us for various reasons. And so, you know, they've continued to look at, at how do I go about doing this. So let's think about what does this really mean in terms of the economics of cloud computing? Well, it means a couple of things. First and foremost, it means that now that there is a viable option to do to deliver IT services, uh, and in this case it would be public clouds, okay, to be able to deliver IT services. Uh, on purely a cost basis. So somebody else um, eats the capital expenditure cost, they build a business model that says, I'm going to service enough customers that have enough variability in their demand for IT services that I can afford to make a capital investment, in, in essence, become a provider of IT services, and be able to deliver that to the people that want to consume that, whether they're a line of business, they're individual users, their customers of this provider of IT services in a way that they can spread those costs out. And what this means for end users is they can begin to get things on a purely OPEX basis. Now, this means a couple of really, really important things when you think about it from a cloud computing perspective. It, it sets a very, very new baseline for what the cost of IT service should be, the speed at which IT services should be delivered, the uh, flexibility of which IT services should be delivered. Right? So again, we're going back and looking at the people that do this best, deliver IT services on a large scale, dynamically best, and saying, 
That's the new baseline. That's the new best practice for our industry. And so what you have to look at if you're an IT organization is the first thing you're going to have to do is start to change your mindset. Or actually as a business you have to think about, do I want to continue to make IT services, IT delivery of services, IT owning of assets, core to my business? Or does that become context? In which case I start to say, maybe I look to have somebody else do that for me. So that's probably the first big decision that you make that's economically driven. The second thing is if you are an IT organization within a business, right, you have to look at yourself and say, am I meeting this baseline? Do I have any way of coming close to being able to deliver the cost, the speed, and the flexibility of services to users that the, the public domain, the public clouds, and all these different service providers can do? So you have to sort of measure yourself against those criteria. Okay? The next thing you have to do is if the answer to that is no, that may not be a bad thing, right? That may, that may not be a situation where you say, boy, we can't do that today, we should absolutely shut down our IT organization. But what it should force you to do is say, well, how far away from this baseline are we? Where are we missing things? Where are we missing things in terms of the IT skills we need? Do we have the skills in-house to be able to deliver things on a more dynamic basis, to be able to uh, enhance and create automation in our environment, to be able to uh, deliver self-service capabilities out to our end users, right? So you have to look at what skills do I have? And we'll talk about that later in this video series, but there's a cost associated maybe with getting those skills. So that's a second economic value you have to look at. The third thing you want to look at is, what does my portfolio of IT services look like and how do those compare to the portfolio of business needs that my company has? And what you may find is that you may have had a, a mix that was, you know, 50-50 or 60-40 of, of internal versus external, and this may need to change. This may need to come up, this may need to go down, this may need to expand because people are bringing in more devices. Whatever that might mean, you've got to look at what's my portfolio mix. And again, this is an economic discussion, not just what's the underlying technology, but how well do I have technology that aligns to my business, right? So what do we have? We have, are we core or context? Um, for IT, right? Do we want to keep things in house? We want to move them out, of, move them outside. How far from the baseline are we? And by that we mean, you know, what do we have to do for IT skills? There's potentially cost involved with that, right? In terms of retraining people, in terms of bringing on new people, and being able to maybe leverage outside services to help you get things up to speed. We want to look at our portfolio of. What IT services do we deliver today? How well do those line to the business needs today? And where's the business going and how are we going to need to, to potentially shift that? Because that may have an economic, economic impact coming back to, is it core context? What kind of skills do we have? And again, these become this sort of um, um, you know, loop that you have to constantly be, be looking at. Now, so we get to a point where we say, okay, I understand the ability to deliver OPEX versus CAPEX is changing, and that's a good thing. It gives business flexibility, it gives IT flexibility. Some baselines have been established in terms of how fast new services can be spun up, right? And the baseline for that, you know, maybe the simplest way to think about that is, what can you deliver in a day? And there are plenty of IT services uh, that are delivered via public cloud and software as a service on anything that are measured in literally minutes. But let's, let's use one day as an example. Can you turn something up, a demand from the business, in one day? Okay, maybe that should be your baseline. Okay, it's not a super high bar, but, but it's a bar that you can measure yourself against. How much can you get done in a day? That becomes your baseline in terms of cost, in terms of speed, in terms of cost, can you measure things on a per server basis, on a per megabyte or gigabyte basis in terms of usage, in terms of you know granular level things? How fast can you do it? And how flexible do you need to be when, when multiple groups come to you with requests? So that's what you measure yourself against. You measure yourself against these criteria and really be honest about, you know, are you able to adjust and move? Or is that going to be outside the scope of what you've been budgeted for by your business, by where you want the business to leverage technology? And the third thing to really look at is, um, you know, once you kind of have an understanding of this is, what are the overall costs? Because what can be very, very deceptive when we look at public versus private cloud computing or software as a service versus owning assets through hardware and software is what's the life cycle 
that I expect these resources to be used for, right? So let's take an example. If I'm going to stand up uh, an application like email in my environment, and whether somebody thinks email is a cloud application or not a cloud application, they could argue uh, Microsoft Exchange versus Gmail or any combination of them. Email is an application that is going to be the application, so email. It's going to require some number of uh, resor infrastructure resources to be able to run. And infrastructure resources are going to be, again, servers, storage, the network, any security uh, elements you need, load balancing ele elements that you need. But this is an application that you would tend to think from a business perspective that you're going to need throughout the life cycle of the business. You're not going to get rid of email tomorrow. It's not going to be a three-month project. It's not going to be a six-month project. It's going to be something that the business is going to use, whether they own it or they you know, basically lease it, uh, for a very, very long period of time. So you want to economically look at that and say, well, instead of thinking about you know, how many servers this requires and what's the cost per server, you, know, you may look at this more holistically and look at the ROI of it over a long period of time three years, five years, whatever feels comfortable for your business, right? So you may not necessarily be comparing, you know, what is the cost per user for acquisition or the cost per megabyte of storage, but you may look at the overall cost in terms of IT skills needed, in terms of devices that it supports, in terms of cost of the infrastructure, in terms of how much you think you're gonna grow, how long you're gonna retain the data for compliance reasons, a much very broad view of, of how you look at ROI. Now, let's look at a different example to which um, you, know, you may make a very, very different measurement, economic measurement for cloud computing. Let's suppose that your marketing organization comes to you and they say, hey, um, one of our hottest seasons is coming up. You know, we're, we're getting ready to ramp up around our big trade show coming out. We're getting ready to ramp up around the seasonal peak in, in demand. And we want to run some new campaigns. We want to run some things that are online and maybe tie into social media and you know, do all sorts of cool whiz-bang marketing things. Um, and so you ask them some questions and you find out that, well, this is something that's going to need some application. You don't actually know exactly what it'll be, but some application will get created. And it's going to need some underlying infrastructure to it. Okay, Same story as we heard before. But the window that we need it is really going to be peak for about three months. Right? It's going to be you know, the run up and the build up to the event and maybe a month after the event. But then after that, you know, they may only want a really small footprint of that application and that infrastructure after the fact. Right? Because they're not going to maintain it. They got all the credit cards or they got all the names or the email addresses, whatever those might be, but a much, much different type of application. Not a life cycle of the business type of application, but, but maybe a short lived life application. And so this is where you do an ROI measurement of you saying, well, does it make sense for a short period of time to buy all this infrastructure, right? To do custom app uh, development for the application and bring those skills in house, or does it maybe make sense to leverage that as more of a context type of thing and leverage outside resources, public cloud resources, whatever that might be. And so you have to make some decisions about, is this something that will become reusable over and over and over again? In which case, maybe it begins to look like that long life uh, application like email did or an ERP application or is it realistically something that you go well marketing people never know how to measure what they do and we don't want to put a huge set of uh, financial commitments behind this so we're going to give them kind of this you know dynamic one-time infrastructure and a very very small longer cycle infrastructure because until they can really prove to the business that what they're delivering is valuable we can't make that kind of commitment and so when you've got that variability in your applications, you have to be able to say, well, from a cloud computing perspective, economically, does it make sense to think about certain things one way, other things another way? Am I going to be able to potentially say, well, this application looks like this, but there's you know, 10 others behind it that look very, very similar? In which case, if I looked at one application, maybe the ROI model doesn't make sense for CapEx versus OpEx, but if there's going to be bunch behind it that look very, very similar, maybe I do make a different CapEx versus OpEx decision. And that's where having choice with cloud computing, whether those are internal resources, private cloud, external resources, public cloud, or some variation, combination between the two of them, begins to allow you to think very, very differently and have a lot of flexibility from an economics perspective. So 
the thing I'd ask that you take away from this economics discussion is a couple, three core things. The first is the ability to deliver uh, IT services across a whole bunch of different financial models is available today. You want to be 100% OPEX, it's available. You want to be 100% CAPEX, it's still available, it's been available for a long time. But some variation between OPEX and CAPEX is also available today. Now, what's different is those OPEX, all OPEX environments, I can be more dynamic about them. Right, I'm not necessarily locked into long contracts. Now there's some technology involved with making that happen, but the flexibility for how you pay for delivering IT as a service is, is uh, much broader than it was in the past. When I think about um, where am I today if I'm an IT organization or I'm a new company looking to deliver technology as the core of my business, I have to look at am I as good as what's available in the public domain today? If not, how do I get there or how do I measure myself against some well-known baseline? And what are the costs for those, those differences, those deltas, right? So that's the second economic thing to take a look at. And the third thing is as you're evaluating um, how to leverage new applications, whether they're old applications, new applications, new development environments, new business opportunities, there's a lot of variability that you can think about and leverage in terms of where you apply cost, where you can apply your skills, where you can apply technology versus letting somebody else do that for you. And you need to look at that sometimes very, very uh, small case, right? You're gonna look at things from just a couple of months and there's some new great things around pure OPEX models that'll help you versus maybe things that are long-term for the business where some combination of OPEX plus CAPEX uh, might be a better fit, okay? So uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope this economics, basic economics of cloud computing lesson has been useful and again, um, Think of it in the context of not only uh, what you can do for the business and the economics for the business, but also we'll talk about how the technologies that underlie this will help you be able to, to push those knobs to be more CapEx, less CapEx, more OpEx, and have variability and flexibility between those different models. Thank you and thanks for watching.